The cross-reference will take you from where you're at now and refer you to another page to finish and or continue with the rest of the story. Here I want to show you how you can insert cross-references into your document that will reference or refer you to either headings, bookmarks, captions, and others. But before you can insert a cross-reference, you got to have something to reference. And again, those things can be set up within your document, or the three that we're going to be covering here, are headings, bookmarks, and captions. So, let's go throughout the document to identify the three, where they're at, so we have a heads up when we insert the cross-reference beforehand where it's going to be taking us. So first off, do we have any headings within my document? Well, not as we see it, but as Word sees it. Because if Word doesn't know that that's a heading, then it won't include it in this advanced feature cross-reference. So when I look at this heading, how does Word see it? As you recall my Styles Training video, to make it into a heading that Word sees as a heading, you have to come up here on the Home tab to the Styles group and apply a heading style. And you've got more heading styles here. And if you don't, well, you can watch my Styles Training video to reveal more of them. In any case, go ahead and select one of the heading styles so Word will see the selected text as a heading. And if you don't like the style of it, like the type of font, the color, the size, again, you can right-click on it. Oh. There we go, to modify it. In any case, you can watch my training video on that. So once Word sees this as a heading, then when you do Control-F to open up the navigation pane and you go to Headings, it'll also pull it over here because, hey, it knows it's a heading, at least. Faith, Hope, and Charity. What is Glenn? That's a heading. This is Glenn. That's a heading. Again, all with the same heading styles, heading one, or any heading style, so it can identify it and pull it in. So now that we know that we got headings within the document that Word sees as headings, we can also pull them in as a cross-reference or to reference one of those headings. Let's go ahead and close out of here. The other one that we want to do is, well, our figure, the caption for this image. So see figure one. And then the third and final one we want to do is a bookmark. And there it is right there, the gray eye beam, which in my bookmarks training video, if you want to see your bookmarks, well, you can watch it. But you have to go backstage to reveal the code there. And I wanted to show you that it's right there. And this section right here is about the conversion story for Glenn Beck. So I'm going to do three cross-references, one to the conversion story. So it's bookmarks, so I can cross-reference it. And then see figure one and also a heading. So to do all these, let's start from the beginning, Control Home, to take me to the beginning of the document, and let's do this. I want to introduce you to Glenn Beck. And then it says a bunch of fluff things about Glenn, but if you want to get right to the point after you read Glenn Beck, you're like, who is he? What is Glenn? Remember, we have a heading that says, what is Glenn, that we can cross-reference to, that they can bypass this and start reading about what is Glenn. So let's go ahead and hit the space bar and insert the cross-reference to do that. Come up here on the ribbon, click on References, go to Captions, and there you go, Cross-Reference. Click on it, and oh, there you go, the reference type. Of course, you have the others. We're going to be doing Bookmark, Figure, you've got additional ones like Footnote, EndNote, Table, Equation. Well, we'll keep it as Heading. And then down below, it lists all the headings within the document, and we want to reference what is Glenn. And then what do you want to insert the reference to? the heading text, so it inserts the text or the page number that it can be found on. Let's do the heading text. Click on insert, close out, and there you go. So when they're reading this, they're like, okay, television news show host Glenn Beck, what is Glenn? Well, that seems kind of funny. So what you need to do when you insert a cross-reference is help them out, because otherwise it's going to look pretty choppy. And what I mean by that is do open parentheses and say something like, and let's close it here. And, well, I don't like the font type. Let's come up here in the mini formatting toolbar and do time, whether you go Times New Roman, hit enter, and click off. And Okay, see if this helps. So when they're reading this, and they get to Glenn Beck, and they're like, oh, who is Glenn? What is Glenn? And they come over here, what is Glenn? Oh, see the heading if I want to learn more about what is Glenn and not go through some extra extemporaneous stuff. Then to be able to get to the heading, if it's printed out, they can just go ahead and scroll down until they find the bold of what is Glenn and go, oh, okay, let me go ahead and read that. Or, since it's in electronic format, you can hover over the cross-reference and you can see in the pop-up, you can hold down the control key and you can go ahead and click on it and it takes you right to the heading. Oh, that's so fun. Let's do it again. No, I'm kidding. Let's go ahead and do control home to go back up. And you can do, well, the heading text or click in it and hit the backspace key to delete all of that. Let's get rid of all that. There we go. See the heading, comma, 
and then to cross-reference again, this time to do a page number, come up here, cross-reference, heading, what is Glenn, and the page number it can be found on, which is at the bottom of page one, when I click on insert, there you go, page one, close out. Well, when it comes to holding down the control key and clicking on it, it takes us, well, to the bottom of page one, to what is Glenn, which is cool, awesome. And, you know, you can have it that way, but the help before it, well, I can't leave it as see the heading, one, I gotta say see page one, or how about this? page one, something like that, to let them know what they're looking for and where. In fact, you may want to put it in quotes there. Cool. So we've got that. Let's go ahead and do the next one. Scroll down to our I-beam there. So the conversion story, it's right there. So let me scroll back up to the top and towards the end of the first paragraph, overcoming it with the correct principles of getting back into the flow of God. Now, the flow of God is what Glenn did, is that he had his own conversion story. And so if we want to go ahead and give him a cross-reference to the highlights of a conversion story and how he got back into the flow of God, as well as what he recommends the government do to get back in the flow, well, we can go ahead and do that. So let's click at the end here and type in there. A little bit of an explanation before we insert the page number. So we just don't have a number sitting there by itself and people go, oh, that's nice. It must be a footnote. So there you can see for a conversion highlight C page and then we'll insert the cross-reference to it by coming up here, clicking on cross-reference. And it's not a heading. It's a bookmark that we have booked for the conversion highlights. It's the only one. And we can do the bookmark text, but well, we already have the text conversion highlights there. So how about the page number? Because, well, that makes sense after C page and then the number. Click on insert, close out, cool. Let's go ahead and close that with the parenthesis here. And if I want to get right to it, go ahead and hover over it, hold down the control key, click on it. There we go, takes me right to the beginning of it. Now, as far as electronic goes, when you control click, you'll be able to go, oh, this is the beginning of it. But if you print this out, it's not gonna make sense when somebody goes to page two and goes, okay, well, where in the heck is the conversion story? So you may need to think ahead a little bit and say this is the conversion story. So when it says go to page two, they go to it and they're like, oh, okay, this is where I read about the conversion. Let's do the last one. Scroll down to the bottom of this page here because at the top of the next page is see figure one. So if you want them to, on this page, at the end of the paragraph, to reference that fig, let's go ahead and insert a cross-reference, C, and then come up here, click on cross-reference, change it from bookmark, it's now going to be figure, and we only have one, and you can insert it as a hyperlink, so it's the same thing if you leave it alone. When you hover over it, you can hold down the control key and click on it, and it'll take you right to figure one. Now, do you want the entire caption? What other choices do we get? Only label and number, which means that you get the label figure and the number one. Well, let's do that. Go ahead and click on insert, close out, and well, that's pretty fancy. And then you can hover over it and do what it says in the pop-up. Hold down the control key, get the finger and click, takes you right to it. Now, when it comes to spotting all the cross-reference fields in here to be able to identify them quickly, some are a little bit easier than others, like, well, this one is, or if you click and drag and you get a double shade, you'll see that that's a cross-reference field or a dynamic field. And what I mean by that is that, well, your document's always changing, and so this has got to keep up with it. And as a better example, let's go ahead and scroll back to the top of page one, that this one says it's on page one, the heading, what is Glenn, right? Well, what if I come down here, and I click before it, and I start typing in a bunch of text, maybe three or four pages worth. So it pushes the what is Glenn heading down several pages. Let me hold down the control key and hit enter, enter, enter. Okay, it's no longer on page one. So when I scroll back up to the top, and I'm like, uh-oh, what you can do is one of a couple of things. If you want to go ahead and right-click on it, you get the update field, left-click on that, it'll update it. Or if you don't want to do that for every single cross-reference field within your document, you can go ahead and do Control a then hit the F9 key on the keyboard. And it will go through every single dynamic field you have within your document, including cross-references, table of contents, which we haven't covered yet, 
and it will find out where those key markers are, the bookmarks, the figures, the headings, and say, oh, you're referencing this. It's no longer on page one. It's on page four. Automatically update that and great. That's why it's dynamic because we don't want it to be static if we're adding anything additional to our document or even taking it away so it's no longer on the page because, oh, what a nightmare. You print this off after you made changes and it still references page one. Ooh, that's a lot of wasted paper. So in any case, keep that in mind so you can do those updates when you make additional changes to your document. That puts them on other pages than they originally were. And if you want to be able to identify those dynamic fields, well, you can go backstage, click on File. Go down to Options, go to the Advanced, and we want to scroll down to Show Document Content. Well, we were showing bookmarks. We can uncheck that so it gets rid of that I-beam. Bookmark will still be there, but we won't be able to see it. And then the Field Shading. So for the Dynamic Fields, when it's just selected, you know, when you select it, you get a darker shade of it. Well, you don't have to select it anymore if you quickly want to identify it anywhere in the document that there's a dynamic field. Say always. Click okie dokie, and there you go. So without selecting it, you can see that. Say dynamic field, four, two, and well, also the citation here, and more citations, and boy, we got to go all the way down here to see figure one and figure one. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.